Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live 10 at 10. As a kid, you don't think of what could happen. You think of, like, the cool, the cool ending. You don't think of the bad one. A 4th of July warning from a local man who lost his hand during a fireworks accident. Good evening and thank you for joining us. Mike has the night off. The amount of people going to the emergency room for fireworks related injuries is on the rise in Minnesota. That's according to hospital data that also says young people are disproportionately hurt by them. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson spoke with a man who says he never would have imagined what happened to him 10 years ago. It's a story you'll only see on Valley News Live. You don't just wake up one morning and get to this point. It's a lifestyle. A lifestyle Casey Martin fell out of and recently rekindled the flame. It's all trial and error. Every person's body's different, so. The people, the pounds, and the persistence is what's helped him get his life back. I went through the whole like depression, like the whole, I like, go, oh, nobody's gonna want me here. Like, back when Martin was 16, his homemade fireworks didn't go as planned. There's a legal class of fireworks that are made to be fired off electronically instead of with an actual fuse. So when I went and hit it with heat, it just blew up. It didn't like spark. It was just, it just ran by electricity, so like the heat just set it off, went off my hand. Martin was life lighted to Minneapolis, where he had a four hour surgery and had to begin life again without his right hand. I got lucky enough to have like really good friends that were there to support me and like bring me up. And it just slowly and slowly has gotten better and better and better. Friends to lift him up and eventually help him adapt to life back in the weight room. <laughs> There's no limit on dedication. I guess if you want something, as long as you got enough heart and drive and want something bad enough. You can do whatever you want. Don't let the opinions and of others and like doubt cloud your mind and get in the way of where you want to go. You may not even notice the lifting hook. So it starts turning purple because I got it strapped on so tight. But you will take note of those he's inspiring. Me being one of those people. Nicole Johnson, Valley News Live. Martin has plans of becoming a motivational speaker. He wants to help other people who have been through tough times. He also says be careful with fireworks and encourages people to buy them instead of making them. For the second time in as many days, a missing child is home after getting lost in a cornfield. It happened in rural Ottertail County, Minnesota. According to family members, the two-year-old boy was out with his father as he was irrigating his fields and wandered away, laid down and fell asleep in the cornfield. For two and a half hours, family, friends and first responders searched the field. A drone and helicopter were also used. The helicopter ended up finding the boy. When searchers got to him, the little boy was still napping. According to family, searchers were about 50 yards from the boy in the 325-acre field. And remember to like Valley News Live on Facebook. You can follow the latest news, weather, and breaking news updates anytime on your feed. Just search Valley News Live, like our page, and you'll stay informed throughout the entire day. City leaders in Valley City say they're having to use their drinking water source as a means to clean up raw sewage, a leak. It's the result of a pipeline break near the new Valley City Wellness Center. Valley News Team's Natalie Parsons explains. Dylan Ripplinger lives off 6th Avenue in Valley City, right across the street from a pipeline break, a pipe that's leaking raw sewage. While at work, he heard what was happening near his home and had concerns. I didn't know if I was going to come home to sewage in the street or if it was going to stink real bad or if my house is going to be full of sewage. And I spoke with one of the residents who lives here on Viking Court who did not want to go on camera. He told me Thursday night he saw sewage bubbling in his backyard and then come the morning it was in front of his apartment where you see the cones behind me. City crews worked to tackle the issue and found that the part of the pipe that takes all raw sewage within the city to lagoons was leaking. The city doesn't want raw sewage backing up into people's homes or private properties, so instead they made a call to pump it into the Cheyenne River. We have asked the citizens of Valley City uh, during this little mini emergency, if you will, to limit their water usage. Contractors who work to replace the piping believe it's the same piping they worked on a year ago. 
The city says at this time it's unclear exactly how much sewage leaked and when exactly it began, but ensures all repairs should be completed by midnight. Valley City officials also told us the North Dakota Health Department backs the plan to temporarily pump the leaked raw sewage into the Cheyenne River because the fast river flow will easily dilute it. We've got breaking news to report for you. There's some kind of incident going on at the Fargo Airport. We called the Fargo Police Department. They cannot release anything specific right now, but uh, did tell us there is an incident there. Officers are on the scene, first responders. We have a Skycam picture over, you can see it's, it's uh, the far left and Hutch in the middle too also. Um, yeah. Blinking lights um, coming from the airport. That's 19th Avenue. And uh, it's been going on for, for a little while. We've also had some Facebook viewers uh, reach out to us and say they're stuck in cars at the airport. Other people are stuck with them, roughly 20. And uh, they say that there are cops uh, surrounding a certain area right around the entrance of 19th Avenue. So we have a crew on the scene, uh, and we will bring you much more as we get it. And Andrea, I will go ahead. I'm sorry, and if you want to go ahead and let, let you know that mm -hmm. this is 19th Avenue right here, and all of the emergency vehicles are on 19th there. So we've seen this now for the last 20 plus minutes, and we'll keep our eyes on that. And as Andrea mentioned, we'll have much more when our crew gets on the scene. Okay, thanks so much, Hutch, for pointing that out to everybody, what you're seeing on the Skycam. Okay, to other news, a woman's body was found in the charred aftermath of a blaze in South Moorhead earlier this week, and today police say they have a suspect in custody. They arrested 38-year-old Justin Critt. He's being held at the Clay County Jail on an unrelated matter until formal charges can be filed in connection with that fire. Officials say the woman's body was found when firefighters were searching the house after the fire. Investigators know her identity and say she and Justin Critt knew each other, but neighbors say things are different now on their block. Well, you know, it is scary. It's scary to, find, to, to think of anybody laying there and getting, you know, burned. It has changed the atmosphere. It really has. Justin Critt was also convicted of first-degree arson back in 1995 for his involvement in a fire at the Detroit Lakes Junior High School. The Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension has released the state's 2015 Uniform Crime Report. Some notable findings were that violent crimes, such as murder and sexual assault, increased by 7.6 percent from the previous year. Murder specifically saw a 58 percent jump, with 130 murders in 2015 compared to 82 in 2014. Property crimes like burglary and larceny saw a decrease of 2 percent in 2015. If you want to see the entire BCA crime report, we have posted a link at valleynewslive.com. U.S. Attorney Chris Myers believes the opiate enforcement strategy developed earlier this year in the FM area is working. Myers reports that about 100 local, state, and federal law enforcement officials met in Fargo to craft a strategy to crack down on drug traffickers, emphasizing fentanyl. There will be another community forum in July. Eyes Wide Open Phase 2 will take place at the Fargo Theater on July 20th. A third forum is planned for this fall. For more information, Visit our website and click on this story. The medical marijuana industry has grown a lot in the past year. Today, LeafLine Labs, one of the state's two medical marijuana manufacturers, opened two new clinics in St. Paul and Hibbing. Men uh, Minnesota Medical Solutions, the state's other medical marijuana manufacturer, has also recently opened three other locations in St. Cloud, Moorhead, and Bloomington. There are currently eight medical marijuana dis dispensaries in Minnesota.